Can't preach with Rashad. We are the prophets here with another episode of another sermon. Coming to y'all, man, with another another great show, another great, another great uh, you know, hour and hour and so with y'all, man. Rashad, how's it going, up? Everything's good, man. We had a, another great week of entertaining football. We had the Thanksgiving games. We had, uh, of course, a lot, a lot of crazy action on Sunday. So you know, man, let's let's get into it, man. The, the whole crazy college football, and it's, it's a lot going oh, on. Oh yeah, right definitely. Now, it's it's the time of everything matters more, <laughs> whether that's real football or fantasy football. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's like everything's everything to come into that point. Um, so let's start off Saturday. Let's start off talking about college football. We talked about it on on Thursday show about how is it, is it going to come down to Oklahoma or is it going to come down to Bama. And we knew Bama had to put on a show against Auburn to win it. Uh, yeah, as far as to put a good pressure on the committee, because that would be their last game, last showing, and they end up losing the game. Um, now, it's like when you watch the game, you're like, okay, 48-45. But Matt Jones, you know, he – I mean, you, you don't have – obviously, you're not Tua. You're not Tua. So, you can't do everything he can do. But you have the weapons that Tua has. You have Najee Harris back in, in the backfield. So, and you still got the O-line. And all that stuff, but you can't throw two pick sixes in, in a game in a rivalry game on the road and think you're going to win. Yeah, that was the turning point of the game. You know, if you throw one pick six, maybe you can get by, but to have two of those, that's just that's going to do you in every time. I mean, turnovers are bad enough, but when they lead to 14 points on the board, you just can't have that. And we know Nick Saban and, you know, Belichick and Pete Carroll, like, those are always defensive-minded guys. And for Saban's defense to not be able to slow down Auburn at all, I, I, we are talking about the 14 points from the, the pick sixes, but even when Auburn had the ball, like, their offense was was clicking. So as a defensive guy, I know they're missing Moses and stuff like that, but as a defensive guy, they should have been able to have some type of schemes to – have time adjustments to slow down Auburn's offense, and they couldn't even do that. Yeah, and this, this, I mean, if you if you look at Matt Jones' stats, he had 335 passing yards. Right, you be adding a pick six because you throw it to the other team. <laughs> That's 465 yards because that pick six is 100. That was that was a big swing. That was that was, that was a, a 14 point swing there because that was that have been that have been a touchdown. You know what I mean? Like, um, well, yeah, or at least right. field goals. Like they came at bad times. Right. Yeah. Too. Exactly. So. It, it, it did turn the game around, and Alabama still had chances to win the game. I mean, you got you got the the kicker, man. You got one job. Let's, let's make the field goal, and you hit the upright. I feel like when you, I feel like when you hit the upright, I don't know if I don't know. It, it, is, it, is it worse than just missing? Because it feel like you just made. Oh man, you really tried. You you hit the uh, you hit the like the smallest part of the you know of, of the goalpost, whatever. Uh, but he had one job. He didn't do it. So you still got time in the game. Auburn runs the ball questionable play calls a little bit to me to try to ice the game or whatever. Um, but, uh, you, I mean, like I said, questionable play call, but you had a chance, you had a chance right there. And what happened, what happened? You, you come up 12 men on the field and then lost the game. You don't get the, you don't even get a chance to get the ball back. Yeah. Granted kickers do have one job and that is to make the field goal. But at the same time, I can't put the loss on the kicker. I look at the play before the halftime where Auburn got a chance to put one second back on the clock and their kicker made a field goal. So that's three points on the board that probably wouldn't occur under under normal circumstances because Nick Saban, he was livid about it. So those three points, you can say that led to the win because they did win by three. You can look at Mac Jones' two pick sixes. You can look at of course, their kicker missing a kick, and you know just the, their defense not being able to make enough stops. So there's a lot of things, and then of course you got to talk about the last play where they had 12 men on the field, 
you know, were they allowed to substitute and make the proper adjustments, you know, because in college, that is that rule. You have to give each team time. If somebody subs out, you got to give them time to make the proper adjustments. So, you know, just the special teams aspect really played a big part. I think special teams as a whole, from the kick in to the punt that, that at the end, that, that whole punt debacle, special teams is what I would say won or lost you the game beyond Matt Jones to pick six. Yeah. Uh, either way, they, 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 they end up losing the Iron Bowl. And now they're done. So the band was out the way. So really, I guess there's really only two teams outside of Georgia, of course, that that can that can make it. And that's if Utah wins the Pac-12 or Oklahoma win the Big 12. So that's I mean, there's really I mean, there's really the only two options. I, I don't I don't really see anybody else jumping up there and getting it, uh, and whether whether or not Georgia beat LSU. But uh, yeah, so I mean, like I say, going to the last week, we'll, we'll find out this Saturday as far as. As far as who make who gets it in, because all the championship games are, are this weekend. Yeah, it's pretty much decided of who's going to be in almost. Because I'm pretty sure if Georgia beats LSU, that'll be sorted out on its own because they're going to put both of them in because LSU's been so impressive. And if Georgia beats them, I think they'll let both of them stay in. But if LSU does beat Georgia, it'll just be a matter of who's going to be our one seed and our two seed between. LSU and Ohio State, so they'll have to decide that part based upon resume or who looks the most impressive, all that kind of stuff. And then, like we said, the fourth seed with Georgia out, Alabama out, it's going to come down to Pac-12 championship. If Utah wins, I think they'll get in. And, of course, if Oregon beats them, whoever's the Big 12 champion more likely gets in between Oklahoma and Baylor. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be very exciting to see. I, I low key want Utah in just because nobody really seen them all year. They got a good defense and they got a couple, they got a, they got a running back who's probably gonna get drafted in, in the NFL. So it, it it is something you know it just be something different to see. Even though they probably wouldn't win, but still be different to see. Um, moving on to the NFL, we had some great games. Uh, the Ravens played the Forty Niners. Forty Niners traveled West Coast East Coast played a one o'clock game. I mean. Terrible. Yeah, and that's kind of bad scheduling for the for the uh, for the. I mean, I guess it, it's, it's only it only could have been a a, a prime time game or something. But I guess I guess they didn't know if Ravens, if Fort was going to be this good or if Ravens was going to you know not you know not be as good. Who knew exactly exactly? But um, uh, but either way, either way, it was a good game, good going back and forth. Um, and I th- I think the the main the main thing about this game was. Who was going to make the play when it count? Uh, me and my dad was talking about the game. It was like whoever had the ball last probably going to win. So Ravens had the ball, and what happened? They tried to, they tried to um, go forward on fourth down. Didn't get it. Okay, B- great stop by four downers. Four downers go down the clock. They run down the clock. Run some more clock. Get down there. Go forward on fourth. Couldn't get it. And then the Ravens came back on fourth down. They converted. They got it, and that really was the game. That really. I mean that really was the game because now Fort Niners, you know, time running out because this game ended pretty early for a one o'clock game because both teams run the ball so much. So it, it, it you know, that just happened to happen. And I just want to say Ravens probably got the best kicker of all time. I'm just, you know, obviously this is a, a, a in the moment reaction, but I really never had any doubt that Justin Tucker wouldn't make a field goal. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like every other team, you're like, man, I hope I sure hope he make it. Maybe outside of Kansas City with Bucker. Maybe, um, but everybody else, man, is like, pfft, please make it. But Justin Tucker nail in the coffin right down the middle. It wasn't even close. Yeah, with the scheduling, I don't really kill the NFL for scheduling because I think they have one of the better scheduling protocols in all the sports because they're willing to flex games and things like that. But I guess with under the situation, the scenario, they probably couldn't flex the game out. But just having that West Coast team, you know, it's, it happens before, so I won't trip off it. But just having that kind of a big stage matchup and have that West Coast team to come play in a 1 o'clock game like that, you would prefer to have that in a different time slot. But as it, as it was, you know, it was still a good game. It wasn't crazy, crazy high scoring. So it was a still a good game. The weather played a small part, and it ultimately came down – other things played a part in it, but those fourth downs, it was just a matter of who's going to get the fourth down and get in position to win. And the Ravens did that. And like you said about Tucker, 
outside of Prime Vinatieri from his Patriots days and Goskowski, of course, from his team with the Patriots, those are probably the three most reliable kickers I've ever seen. Yeah, it, I mean, I I know I really had no you know no doubt. I think I think the, another big play was the second half. The, I don't know. It wasn't really clock manager, but the play called him to get more yards. Uh, you know, they had like I think a a bad snap, and then um, it was a throw behind um, Mostart. But they could have they could have got Roby go a little bit more more yards. I think I think when he's coming off an injury in the weather condition that it was, I feel like they was a little closer, maybe a forty five yard or maybe a forty yard. That would have been that would have been great for Robbie Gold, especially again that confidence and. As you saw, you lost by all three. You missed a field goal. So, who knows how, how that game would have, you know, would have been played differently? Because three points does make a difference. So, for everybody who don't think think think, you know, making a field goal or not is a difference, but it does make a difference of how the game is played the rest of the way. So, I mean, would you would you mind if that was if you if you saw a Super Bowl rematch of that? I wouldn't mind because it'll be in Miami this year, so that'll be good weather for both sides. They would have roughly two weeks to prepare for each other, so it'll probably be way better than this time. So I wouldn't mind seeing it again. Of course, you know I'm I'm right with the Forty ers to the very very end, so I wouldn't mind seeing them possibly get revenge and go win a championship. Yeah, I, I think I think the Forty ers played a better game that you need to play to, to you know to win that type of uh game. Like as far as like you know you need to. Make Lamar Lamar Jackson pass on third and longs. Don't if you because if you get in third and three uh, third and fives, they're they they'll get four yards for the one they'll go for. It. So you have to make them third and nine, and 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 have a good play to make them pass. You know what I mean? Because that's that's the best way to that, that's the best, that's the best way to stop them. So, um, it it was it, like it was a good game. I, I feel like it it could have been it could have gone either way. It was it was very very tight all the way through. So, um, great great game by the NFL putting this you know. Potential Super Bowl match in, in week in week thirteen. But if I'm the Ravens, this is a team I don't want to see oh, again, definitely. though. Just, just because of they didn't have, of course, most start did his thing. But they didn't have Breida. Then you got to look at he won't come back this year. But they're missing Quan Alexander from the linebacker spot. They flew to the East Coast and the time slot. So plus the weather. So I think. If you were to see this team again, you've given like, – I like John Harbaugh. He's one of the better coaches in the league. Uh, Greg Roman, he's doing this thing this year. He's probably up – you know, he's probably the best coordinator in the game this year. But if you give the 49ers some tape with the team that they have, the talent they have, I think in two weeks to prepare for a Super Bowl, I think the 49ers would, would probably get them. And it, would, it probably wouldn't even be a close game. Oh, yeah, I feel like a uh, – I feel like a – this was the best two coordinators uh probably in the game this season with this Greg Roman on one side and well, how you say Salu Salah I can I I I really bad with names uh but the defense coordinator for the 49ers both of them both of them have played both of them have played great 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 uh football as far as scheming what the Ravens do scheming what the 49ers defense do and both of them at the top of their games Oh yeah they they didn't put on the show all year from from both sides. Yeah, I feel like these these two guys should be number one and number two as far as head coaching candidates. Um, you know, in, in my opinion, I'll put Chris Richard over both. Over both. Well, okay, if we going on what if you going on this season alone, I guess I should say because you know that pat that that, that, that pad defense for the uh, Cowboys <laughs> a little little suspect right now. Uh, but yeah, yeah. But you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan in, in Chris Richard and Benemy from Chiefs. So, but definitely these two guys are going to get head coaching uh, interviews at least. That's the that's yeah, the they should. Uh, the Patriots, man, Sunday football, Texans. I didn't believe in Texans, but they showed me. I was like, man, I, I text you. I was like, was well, fourteen and three. I said, hey, what's uh, what's uh, going on with the Patriots? <laughs> what, like, what's wrong? It's, it's, it's not it's not it's not no scoring. There's no scoring uh for the Patriots. Tom Brady, they they was a slow, slow start. Um, got it together, almost got the offside kick, and who knows if they would have got the ball, whether they won or not. I I'll put my money probably on Josh McDaniels and Tom Brady to get that W. But none nonetheless, the Patriots offense 
Uh, what do we make of it? Because I mean, over the last the last few games, there's been a lot of field goals. Uh, I think they only had something like what outside. Of, but of course, of course, you know the game script mode is to come back on the Texans game script wise. Um, but before that, a touchdown only against Dallas, a touchdown against Philly, two touchdowns versus Raven, two touchdowns versus Browns. I mean, six touchdowns in those four games. And like I said, game script told them they needed to come back and, you know, throw. Uh, what are your thoughts about this offense um, going forward? They'll be fine. And by fine, I mean, they'll figure it out. They're going to do the best they can with what they have. When you have a mind like Josh McDaniels, Tom Brady, and Belichick, they're going to figure out, all right, this is what we have. We can't go make a trade. There's no waiver claim we can make. There's nothing we can do. Let's just put together some packages of what we have and figure out how to get it done. Because they have almost a record-setting defense. Like Their defense is on pace to be one of the three or four best stats-wise in history. So their defense will keep them in every game. So as long as the offense can make just a few plays, they'll be fine. So your defense will more than likely hold opponents to about 25 or less. The Texans and the Ravens being teams that did score over that. But, you know, look at the Cowboys game, some other games, they're holding teams below below 20. So if you're going to have a defensive team like that, as long as you can – have just a threat of the pass. Because if you can just get a threat of the pass going, you can run the ball, and they'll kind of help you bleed the clock some and give your defense some rest, and then you can always make a few plays to air them in, hit Garcet over the top, things like that. But their main issue, they're just missing that one guy who can take over, like a Gronk or A.B. or Randy. Like They're just missing that one guy that can take over. Yeah, I... I, I mean, I, I think, I think this, I think this, this offense is fine. It's, it's not going to put no points. So if they get into the shootout, I don't know if they can do it. Um, obviously, it depends on the team. It depends on how good defense is. Because I thought this was a Tom Brady game. Because I thought this was, you know, you know, when you struggle, like, like let's say, the, you know, the Cowboys, short against Cowboys, against the Eagles, you really couldn't do that much. But I feel like the secondaries, the secondaries are four. We're for, we're for the Patriots. Like the Eagles' secondary isn't good. The Cowboys have been getting passed on this season, and the Texans' corners. You know they've been picking up corners off the street and trading for them because they got none. So it's kind of it's kind of weird that they couldn't exploit the the secondaries that they needed to. Um, I feel like that was I feel like that was big, you know. Um, but I mean, but they like I say, if you gonna hold your teams to under, you know, twenty points, thirteen. You know, then 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 it's fine. We can we can kick field goals all day because our defense is going to hold. Well, that's one thing the Patriots don't want. No, they don't want to get into a field goal battle because they've been cutting kickers every week. You got Goskowski on IR. They had Kai Forbad, Mike Nugent. They had you know so Nick Folk. They've had so many guys that they're just cutting guys left and right. I'm pretty sure at some point they're going to probably just start going for it on every fourth down if they're in position for it because you can't keep cutting kickers every week. There are only so many out there in my opinion. Yeah. The, the good thing, the good thing is on that is though, though you can, you, the way, the way you play, the way you play games, as far as like um, the, the, the way you call game scripts, you can get you a third and a third and short, you know, or, you know, third, third and five, get you three, four yards and just go for it. Like you're saying, if, if that's, you know, if that's the case. So it's, it's, it's very, it's very, uh, well, what's, what's what we're looking for. It's very, it's, it's very, it's very a peculiar situation because, you know, we talked about the bears last, you know, how last year, how they didn't have the offense, blah, blah, blah. But, it, but it, it seems like, it seemed like, um, because the defense was so good, as long as the offense was, eh, it's fine. Um, yeah, as yeah. long as the offense can make plays when they need to, that's all you really need. Like, as long as a guy like Jacoby Myers can just make that one big catch on third and seven when he needs it to keep the drive going, or as long as Nikhil Harry can just get that one bomb down the field for 30 yards, you know, as long as you can have those plays just sporadically when, when you need it, as long as you can have that, you're fine. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of people – I've been seeing a lot of people saying, you know, they kind of trying to save Tom Brady a little bit, as far as you know, as far as uh, 
you know, what's going on because you know how you know you know how things go if you know Russell, you know Russell Wilson, for example, example his offensive line ain't been the best all season, but you know, but he he's been having you know he's been having success, and even when when Lockett was hurt and before they got Josh Gordon, he he's trusting a rookie receiver in DK just like Nikhil Harris a rookie. Uh, he was he's 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 trusting tight end at the tight end. We don't even know the tight ends. We don't know the tight ends because of fantasy football. Um, and, and yes, he got yes he got a good running game, so that that does support. But I I feel I feel like you know in this game he was you know Tom Brady's smart he's not go, he's not going to make he's not going to throw it up for grabs he's no better than that he has two possession guys of Sanu and Edelman um he 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 know he knows what to do it I say whether whether he's had the greatest numbers because over over the past over the past five games he's only been he's only been completing fifty five percent um that's you know that's dead you know that's one of the worst you know. If you look at the whole league standpoint, that's, that's that's one of the worst in the last five games. Only 255 yards per game, um, but seven touchdowns, two picks, and we know the offensive line been struggling all season, and we know his weapons ain't been the best. But I mean, what's really the difference from this year and last year? I mean, he had he had Grunt. Now I give you that that is a big difference. But Josh Gordon and Sanu, I mean, Josh Gordon is more of a deep threat than than Sanu is, but. Uh, Josh Gordon ain't been the elite Josh Gordon that we just know. It, it, it is his name, you know what I mean? Like, um, is, is is my opinion on that? So I don't know how much how much does Brady can can get a pass on this? Because I mean, obviously he's forty two years old. So can we count on him to be, you know, the goat Brady, or is he just the regular guy Brady now? I mean, every guy needs help, and he's only getting older. So you know, he's he doesn't have. He, if you ask me to take one guy to win me a game, I'll still take him. But it's just the fact that he just needs a little bit more to to hold him up for a right. little bit. You know, having Gronk, having Gronk, that's a, that's a big yeah. deal. And then you know, even with Josh Gordon, you know, outside of his two great years in Cleveland, just having that threat of a deep, a big body receiver that can go deep. Because there were some games last year where he did look pretty. Spectacular. So that's having two guys with big bites that can go get a jump ball or get downfield and make a play like that play Grunt made against the Chiefs in that AFC Championship game. Like just having some guys that can make plays like that, that's what Brady needs. And right now he just doesn't have it. Yeah, that's true. And like I said, there's nothing you can do except, you know, go to frequency. But I mean, the you know, it's, it's hard to fix your offensive line during the season unless you make a trade. And same thing for your weapons. Uh, unless you know, unless you got somebody coming off an injury or something that that, that sparks you, kind of, or a suspension, kind of like how the Browns were sparked by Cree Hunt a little bit. Um, so we'll see the pitch offense go forward. I think it really, de- I think it really just depends uh, on the on the defense. Like as far, I mean, on, on not on the defense, but on the team that they're playing against defense. So I don't, I don't know what to make of the Cowboys, Philly, and, and Texas because it's not like JJ Watt was coming at them. Uh, you know the deep and the. The Cowboys really don't get that much pressure, and yeah, Eagles. We know that how the Eagles they they are they're a good run stopping team. You know the pass defense is a suspect as we've seen, you know the past few weeks. So I don't know what kind of team can they can they really go off against. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but I just believe in. You got Brady, you got Belichick, good defense, McDaniel's. I just believe that. Any given day, they can get it done. Yeah, they, they'll I, figure it yeah, out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's like because we know what they can do all together. It, at some point, they're going to figure it out. And you know, it's crazy. It's like, man, we could. It's like most teams can be. I feel like the teams that they need to beat, maybe maybe the teams that they can can they score enough against is the, the Ravens, Texans, and, and the Chiefs. I mean, we'll we'll see we'll see. They got the Chiefs coming up, so we we'll, we'll, we will see. Can they score enough? Especially if Mahomes can score a lot, you know. I mean, the Patriots may just do the same thing against the Chiefs they did against the Ravens. They may just show a few defensive packages. If you beat it, fine. If you don't beat it, okay. But they won't they won't show their entire hand because they're gonna be thinking about we could see this team down the line. So let's not show everything that we got, you know, in, in the back exactly. of tricks. Um, let's move on to some other teams, man, who 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 kinda who kinda screwed up. Uh this this week as far as placement, getting a wild card and all, all, all that situation. So Eagles, they had one job to do, and with Dallas losing to Buffalo Bills, your job was to beat 
Yeah, just win, win the, game. the game. No matter how ugly, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you have a, a career game. Doesn't matter if you you know you, you have five turnovers and still some find a way to win. It, it doesn't matter. Just win the game. You you. This is the opportunity because I'm not saying the Cowboys lost a game they shouldn't have lost, but they they lost a game that if you look if you look on the schedule in the season, you probably wouldn't think you, th- you probably think Cowboys would get it based on scheduling. You know, Bills Bills coming off a short week on the road traveling. You know, you know, you get you get what I'm saying. But versus while the Eagles, you go on a roll. You already knew the outcome of the Cowboys game. You know it. They just play football. You know, it's we still got a couple weeks left, but we this is a game we're supposed to win. Especially when we talked about how winnable these games are for the Eagles, and lost to a lost to a two now Miami def, uh, team. That's just unacceptable. Yeah, after being up two touchdowns and letting that team just run off so many points against you, a team that only has two wins, they're basically playing for a draft positioning. They're not playing to for a playoff spot or division crown. Like Philly had everything to gain, you know, just win the game, keep pace with the Cowboys, but instead they did the entire opposite. You gave this team so many answer points, and now the Cowboys are still ahead of you. So now you're almost in a must win the rest of the way. And I was on that, that bandwagon of, I think they can win out and, you know, look pretty impressive going to the playoffs. But instead, you were the constraint and you were like, I think they'll slip up at some point. And it didn't take long for them to slip up. They lost yeah, already. I, like I said last time, I was, I was like, I'm not going to bet on it. But, it's, I, you know, with, with the struggles that they had all season, you you would think, okay, the matchup presented itself for them to go off. But I, it, to be honest, I, I thought it would be the Redskins, not the, not the Dolphins and not the Giants. So I, I was totally completely wrong about that one. But still, it still you, you you lost one that you probably shouldn't have lost. Now you have to now you have to win you have to win out the rest of the way. Um that just that's what it is. Cause whether the Cowboys beats the Bears or whether the Cowboys beat the Rams, uh you're you know, you're down one and they have the tiebreaker. So that's that's a lot. But I mean if you really think about it. Even the Redskins won't be a walk in the park now because they just – we'll talk about them in a second. They just beat Carolina. So, even the Redskins game won't be a walk in the park. And depending upon what Giants team shows up, if if Danny Dimes is not <laughs> – you know, and not Danny Jones shows up, you you have healthy Saquon, you can get Golden Tate, Shepard, and Ingram on the field, you might be in for a long day in those games. So, let's just – I, I know they were my preseason pick, and I'll still ride with it just because it's still in play. But let's see what Eagles team shows up the rest of the way because this could be a team that's basically in disarray. They got their little lucky Super Bowl, and it's been downhill since. Yeah, uh, Carson Wentz hasn't hasn't looked hasn't looked good either. Um, you had you like it, it been a couple of things. It could been, it been a couple of misses that. I'm looking at it like a six five Dallas Goddard or whatever tall he is versus a little a little five nine corner and he throws a, a low pass and it's incomplete instead of a you know, instead of a high pass let let the man go get the ball you know um, so it, it's kind of it's kind of some things that look questionable to me he got Jeffrey back Jeffrey went you know Jeffrey went crazy as as he should um, especially against this, this, this uh, matchup you know so but speaking of what you said about. You said about the uh, about the uh, the the Panthers uh, losing to the Redskins. That's another team that just kind of gave up. Like, how do you how do you let a, a Redskins team come into your house and beat you? And they really stopped McCaffrey. He he didn't really have a MVP type of game. Oh no, he didn't. You know, and the Panthers, even though the Saints have already clinched. Mathematically, the Panthers weren't out of the playoff race altogether, so they too had one job: go beat a team you're supposed to beat with a rookie QB making his second start. They don't really have a great offensive arsenal, so you have a uh, all pro in McCaffrey, a possible Pro Bowler in DJ Moore, a future Hall of Famer. Greg Olson, Kyle Allen has a good in spots. Like, what's your excuse for losing to the Redskins? It's 
<laughs> these are the kind of games that that can cost guys like Rivera their job. Yeah, it was and it was a bad. It was a bad. Um, it's, it's a terrible loss. Like Cal Allen did a, another Cal Allen thing, and the bad thing about it is they was up fourteen zero. I was up fourteen zero to start the game, so I, I just don't, I, just, I don't understand, I don't understand the. We can't beat the Redskins thing. It, the defense. What happened to the Carolina defense? This Carolina defense. If you looked at this, their first few games of the season, we were saying. I, I mean, now, I mean, not me, but but you know, say the the NFL community was saying this Carolina defense is for real. If all, wait till they get Cam back, wait till they get Cam back, or wait till Cam get healthy. That was really the, you know, that was really the whole, the whole, the whole thing as far as we were waiting on McCaffrey's MP level to wait till Cam could come back or whatever like that. And you have to find ways to win a, 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 a ugly game, like like I said, just like the Eagles. It doesn't matter how you get it done; just get it done. Man, Kyle Allen took that terrible sack when he had a guy in the corner wide open calling for the ball. That was terrible. Man. That was just terrible. You can't make those kind of mistakes. Oh no! You, no, uh, and then what? Oh, fourth and goal. Like throw the ball. Just throw it. <laughs> you gotta get some kind of hope. Yeah, you you just can't make those kind of errors. I mean, who knows what direction they decide to go in now? You know, just knowing their future with Cam still being on the books, but injury history, and you know, do you bring him back? Do you not? Do you roll with Kyle Allen? Do you draft the guy? Do you try to move up in a draft, or do you make a trade for Cam for somebody else? Do you swap some picks? You know, they just have a lot of questions they have to get through in regards to their QB position because I feel like at other phases of the game, they have McCaffrey, you have more than Samuel. Who knows what Oza has left in the tank, but you still have some requisite parts on offense. And the defense, they have plenty of playmakers on defense as well. So Carolina could easily be back in playoff contention, you know, a possible 10 win team just with a better QB who won't make. The kind of errors that Kyle Allen has made. Yeah, it just it just like we like to to say when we say something like Kyle Allen, sorry, it's more of a as a starter. Like he he's fine. I think he's fine as a backup. Like you know, uh, your starter goes down for four games and he comes back. Can Kyle Allen make you go two and two? Probably so. I th- I think I think he's that you know like if if you need if you need it him to come in. And, and and just stay afloat for a couple of games. He can do it, but for a season long thing, that's where that's where you, you get the inconsistencies and up and downs of, of a team like the Panthers. And it's it's good to see that DJ Moore is is, is still emerging with or without you know a, a great quarterback. McCaffrey have an MVP level type of season, um, but the defense been falling off for a while, and you have to be you have you have to shut down the Redskins. I mean that. I should have, I shouldn't have to say that. <laughs> Let's shut down the race kid. They because they really should be shut down. They don't really they have Haskins and that's not a good enough quarterback. So why you know why why are you struggling to 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 stop this? And the team put up over twenty five points on you. Yeah, there are just certain teams you have to beat, and the Redskins who are basically terrible at everything. You should not lose to that team. That's that's basically what it boils down to. Just. Win the game you're supposed to win, but with this loss, they're basically out of the playoffs. There's no way they would catch anybody else. Another team that uh that didn't get their job done, the Raiders, missed the opportunity, in my opinion, to control control the division. And you know, by saying that is you win you win this game, you beat Kansas City, then you Kansas City plays New England. So you kind of need Kansas City to lose as well, but I feel like you 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 was splitting the division, and but then having having the fact that having the fact that Kansas City had played a harder schedule than you, you could have got away with a lot of things, and they missed the opportunity in that. And now losing the last two weeks, losing to the Jets, oh my gosh, losing to the Jets first of all, then then getting blown out in this game, blown out the last two games, like you're pretty much done. Like the Raiders, I, I just you know I was almost in almost in with them to. That they they can make the playoffs just because of how the season was falling. It would have been a great game, Chiefs versus Raiders coming up. You know that's how, that's how I was thinking two weeks ago. Come out flat versus the Jets, get blown out cross cross country trip, and then get in the game that you're probably looked ahead to, and get blown out again. I just I just don't see the Raiders. Um, you know when you when you look back at the season, you'd be like, 
Well, Raiders played, you know, they was pretty good, but all their losses have been blowouts. Yeah, this is what I was thinking about when we did our um, AOC West preview. Like, they had such a wide range of outcomes of how good could they be or could they be bad. And we have saw both ends of that stick this season. Like, they've had games where they look so impressive. Like, man, the Raiders are – they're back. You know, they, they, they could be something. And then they have games against the Jets – where it's thirty four to three, you don't even get a touchdown. Then you have games against the Chiefs where it's forty to nine. So games like this are kind of showing like yeah, they're ahead of schedule as far as rebuilding and getting ready to go to Vegas and stuff like that. But the Raiders this season, I mean they could have easily been a ten win team when you look at it. They have six wins now. If they would have beat the Jets, they would have been seven and they could have beat the Chiefs, that's eight. I'm pretty sure down the stretch they could have taken care of the Jaguars at home, maybe beat the Chargers or the Broncos. So you could have even – they could have played, maybe beat the Titans. So you could have maybe got a 10 or 11 win season and probably won your division, and they would have gave you even more momentum for the move to Vegas and things like that. But now I think, based upon what's happening now, they're going to probably wind up going 8-8. Eight and eight. Derek Carr's not looking good. Um, Josh Jacobs is running the ball like a madman. He he's gonna probably be offensive player of the year or rookie of the year. But everything else, Derek Carr not having any receiving threats outside of Waller, Tyrell Williams, he's going ice cold since like the first four weeks where he was really just getting touchdowns. He hasn't really done anything outside, you know, just a few touchdowns earlier. They they just like New England, they miss A B. <laughs> so you know, it's just the Raiders were a team that could have been they, – they could have been a surprise team this year or they could have been a dud team, and now they're turning to a dud just these last two weeks. Yeah, I don't you know. I mean, it's like the schedule The schedule may per, permit itself and then do something else, but um, I pretty much – you know, I pretty much throwing them away in the AFC. Uh, I trust – you know, I trust the other teams that we're going to talk about more than them, so – um, I mean, Ra- I mean, Raiders, Raiders had a good try. I mean, like I said, they was they was on the verge of possibly winning the AFC. Well, oh, West, yeah, AFC if, West. So let me finish that sentence. <laughs> Not the AFC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if Tennessee beats them this upcoming week, they're all but eliminated at that point because Tennessee will have eight wins and a tiebreak over you. We know Kansas City controls their destiny, so you're pretty much basically done. You know. Whether Kansas City beats New England or not, you're still pretty much done because you don't have any tie breaks to go in your favor. Right. Um, another team, I, I I guess it's not a it's, it's not really a, a bad a bad thing, but the Jets, man, you oh, it, it's bad to me because three game winning streak, you ride a hot, you play in the winless Bengals. I don't care that they made a quarterback switch, which was the right decision. That doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that you. What matters to me is that you lost, and it wasn't even close. Like it's not like it's not like you lost in a shootout game, and just so happens that Dalton is probably better than Darnold Steele, or you know a, a broken play, a miscommunication play late in the game. You know those, those you know those are coaching moments. May, maybe get, you know, and maybe Gates get out coached. Blah blah. I'm I'm okay with that. I'm I'm okay with you in a shootout. Like you know how the Eagles Eagles up twenty eight fourteen shooting out with Miami. With, with for the Jets, I would be okay with that, but you can't like, come out here and get destroyed flat out, like look ridiculous. And the Bengals were the better team on the field, and they shouldn't have been. And 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 that's and that's what was bad to me. We kind I you say Adam Gates was on the hot seat, top five last week, and I was like, well, he's not on mine, but shit, he now he on mine now. Like he 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 might have slid up a little bit on mine now. Yeah, this this was basically the game that just sealed Adam Gates' fate. Because again, back to you know our preview, man, we were saying like, is he really the right guy for this job? I mean, I know you were really heavy on it. Like, why is he still getting job just for being this quote unquote Peyton Manning guy? You know, but he hasn't really done anything since then. So it's like, why is he even this team's head coach? And and we can see, you know, he's right. not being impressive. <laughs> you you can't. You can't even beat – I mean, you beat some other teams that weren't very good teams outside of the, the Raiders. But now, man, you're going to lose to – come on, man, the Bengals. You can't 
be the team that loses to the Bengals. So, and I think this may be the, been the second team that they gave up their first win to. So, like, the Bengals got their first win against them, and I think somebody else got their first win against them. I have to look back at it, but these are, they're just certain teams you can't lose to, and this is one of them. Yeah, it's it's – it's a it's a, it's a it's a game, especially when we talked about how bad the season was for the Jets. Um, like, I mean, you know, earlier the season, how bad that schedule was, and then how it's going to flip flop for you. And okay, yeah, yeah, Miami, Miami beat them, man. So Miami got Miami got their first win against the Jets, and you gave the Bengals their first win. Adam Gates, <laughs> he got to he got to go <laughs> just just for that just bro, for those two alone. Bro, he out of there. <laughs> Gates is done. Uh, he he got to. I mean, he's not. He's never. He, we we knew he never should got the ball in the first place. So the the the, the good job in the first place. Never should have got it. Oh no, he his fate is sealed. I mean, you can't lose to the Dolphins, give them their first win, and the Bengals. I mean, and he had Darnold both games. So ain't like you had Trevor Simeon or the other guy. You know, you actually had Darnold both times against the Dolphins <laughs> <laughs> and the Bengals, man. Like, come on, man. You can't lose both of those to those teams. And both those teams got their first win against you. Gates is done. Like it went he, he should be fired right now, really. I mean what what is keeping him the rest of the season gonna do, really? I mean, I guess him and Darnold have built some rapport, but for the most part, this guy he's done. Like he he should be moved up right behind Freddie Kitchens on like first guys. Oh, fired. definitely. He's definitely passed uh, Jason Garrett. We talked about Jason Garrett for a while. He, he definitely got okay. no man. It just you the only the only games that Sam Darnold went off was besides the Cowboys games were against sorry teams, and then you lose to two sorry teams. <laughs> so it's, it's it can't it can't it can exactly. out. So it, it's it's not it's not enough. It's not working. Come on, bro. Le'Veon Bell, man, only had thirty two like rush like rushing yards, man. That's that's just against the Bengals. You can't stop nobody. I just, ah, uh, man. I just he got yeah. Get him out of here. I, I, I'm I'm tired of talking about Adam Gates. He sucks. I don't even know why he got the job in the first place. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Henry for the kids on that Drake thing. They they top two and either one of them could be not two. <laughs> Both of them got to get out of here. Bro. Um, the last team, the Chargers, man. They um, you had one job and that was just to get to overtime. And Casey Hare, who's one of the best corners in the game. Uh, you know, got called for deep uh, defense pass interference, and that gave the Broncos infield goal range to win, to win the game, which they did. Now, I don't like when pass interferences are called when because it's and it's because of a bad pass. Like Sutton, we want Sutton didn't know what the ball was that either, but he just he just jumped and put his hand up, and that's good enough, you know. Um, and I think I I think. I, I want to hear your thoughts on this. I, I think NFL should change the rules and stick with college as far as uh, when you get a pass interference call, it, it's a 15 yard penalty because everything else, I don't, I don't think there's no, there's, there's no other spot foul in the NFL. Like whether you get a face mask, there's only 15 roughing the passer, 15 holding only 10. Like everything has a number except this defensive pass interference call. And, I guess I understand the reason why it was probably in place because you throw the ball in the air, throw it deep for 60 yards, and I just grab it and push it down, and now you're going to get 15 yards when you had me beat. I can understand why the rule was in place. I, I get it. But when you have situations like that, when you're just throwing the ball up and, hope, and hoping you get a, a, a call and with the struggles that the refs are having with the DPI, I feel like it's this is not the time to, you know, I mean, I, I feel like it's a – I don't, it's it's uh, it may not be the right time for it, but I feel like we need to address the situation because it does changes the game, especially with this. This is a judgment call. Yeah, I'm split on it, but then I'll explain what what puts me over the top. You know, because like you said, if you throw a 50 yard bomb and you're like, oh, I'm beat, I'm gonna just trip the guy. So now it's like, man, we only get 15 yards for this. If he didn't trip, we would have probably had a touchdown. So I understand it from that point of view. But I also understand it from the point of view of just overall consistency of everything else is the yards and automatic first down. So I understand it from both points of view. And even in college, it's just, hey, no matter what, it's the it's the foul, the yards, and 
you just play. But what puts it over the top for me is I like the strategy aspect of this is a spot file because Casey Hayward, you got to know, like, under no circumstances do I let him catch the ball, but also I don't need to create this penalty because it's going to cost us the game, which it did. So I like it from that strategy aspect of it, it's a defensive strategy. Like, even if you're playing a prevent defense and somebody goes for a Hail Mary or something and they commit a P.I., now that changes the entire complexion of the game because now you can get a a free play with no time on the clock because stuff like that. So I like it from a strategy aspect of guys have to maintain their composure and not commit a bogus bonehead penalty or you have to still be alert until there's zeros on the clock. So I like it from that aspect of it's a, it's a strategy standpoint instead of just 15 yards and the time runs off the clock anyway, you still can lose the game. Yeah, it, it's a, it's. I just think it's, it's just a, it's just a, a, a bonehead type of. I mean, like I said, it's too, it's too judgy. We, we can't get this whether it's a PI or not situation uh, handled first. I guess that's the first part, figuring out what a PI is, and then maybe look into that. But you know, you know, you just heaving down the ball down the field. You know, I, I you know, especially when the Chargers had to work so hard to you know get down and get the field goal. Broncos just he won and, and and get lucky. So I'm not I, I'm I'm for it. I'm for the 15 yards instead because like I said, no other no no other no other flag is is that way. So uh, but either way, Chargers always find a way to lose the game, and this is this is another one. <laughs> yeah, I just wish sports in general, especially basketball and football, just had more rule consistency because like both sports have so many inconsistent rules. Like they should just make like a a general rule book for both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, keep it, keep it the same, keep it the same. Uh, because I mean, because like, if you working your way for college, your your job is to work for the end, of, like to get ready for the NFL. So I feel like you shouldn't have all the rule changes because, like, I don't even like the all I need is one foot, uh, for a touchdown or for a catch thing either because you got now you gotta get two feet in the veil. So why you know why are we practicing bad habits? In, in my opinion, it's a bad habit. So, um, I, I feel like. I feel like it, it needs to be conjunction to one because I think in basketball, there's no difference but what the how far the three point line is. That's probably the only difference. Yeah, you got shot clock, shot clock three yeah, point shot clock, line. Yeah. You know they got they got a they got a few small ones, but NFL in college, I mean it's night and day. Like college still does the kickoff. NFL they want to get rid of the kickoff because they feel like it's going to get guys hurt. Right. <laughs> I mean, how many? How many guys in college are getting hurt on the kickoff? I haven't, I haven't saw hardly anybody get hurt off the kickoff. So they should bring the kickoff back. You know, I, I would prefer that. Then, of course, the one foot in, two feet in, spot fouls. You know, just, just different stuff. I mean, they should, they should come up with a more consistent uh, rule policy. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if they do something. I mean, I feel like they, they talked about it before. So let's, uh, I want to see if they if they go back to the to the drawing board and maybe. And maybe come up with come up with something because just just pointing to that, you like, okay, well, yeah, it could have could be or could not be a a, a DPI and well, I mean it probably was, but like I said, it's because of the quarterback threw a bad pass more than more than um uh, it was actually a DPI. So we'll we'll see what changes. But the Chargers, the Chargers are out. They couldn't get the overtime. They're pretty much done. It, it, it was a team that had to win out because you need to get at least nine wins and make the uh Probably at least nine, probably ten, but they already had seven losses, I think. So now, now they are eight. So I think that's that's, that's the end for them. So, bye, Chargers. <laughs> man, the Chargers, man, are they the most snake bitten franchise in NFL history? Oh yeah, it, it's always some. It's always a weird way to lose by them. Always a weird way to lose by them. Um, so, uh, basketball, real quick. We talked about Harden. And he was gonna be he he was gonna score seventy points this season, and we were robbed. And obviously, all right. So I I think the situation was why we were robbed because when Devin Booker got his seventy, when Kobe got his eighty one, when Wood Chamberlain got his his a hundred, they were all they were at all at one point in the game. Kobe Kobe's the only one who won, but they were all losing, so they had to keep playing and they had to keep scoring. And when you're up. <laughs> then um, up fifty points, uh, going into the fourth. I don't think you need him to play. So, um, 
I can understand why they sit him down, but I think I would have as I, I think I would have gone out there and run around and got my got my seventy. I don't care. No, nah, it, it, it's it's too risky. I, I can understand him. he might get hurt, but I'm just going out there and shoot threes. No, I ain't gonna take no basket. I'm just gonna shoot threes and hope. And hope. But no, nah, it's it's too risky, man. You could be trying to make a play on defense, and you know somebody step on your ankle, or you roll your ankle, or you somebody could just get a. It could be the Kawhi thing. You shooting threes, trying to get the foot up under you. It could be so many things that can happen. I know he was a little bit off from his career high. I would have loved to see him go for 70, 75, 80, like just see how far could he get. Because I remember Kobe scoring like 16 three quarters, I think, against like the, the Maris, I think, one year. But, I'm, you know, James got what he got. I'm glad they sat him down because the Rockets, they're one of those teams like the Lakers, like the Clippers, where you're playing for postseason, not regular season. So, it would Mike D'Antoni would have been fired. He would have never heard the end of it. If James Harden got hurt trying to stat pad with a lead that big, they get a new career high. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So I mean, I would I would have tried to stat pad a little bit. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. If that was me. I had coach. You got you know at least put me out there in the first two minutes, three minutes. If I if I if I don't get my six seven points, then go ahead go ahead and take me out because I ain't I ain't gonna get it. But you know I I understand what you're saying. It, it, it's a season we're not playing for one game, but. Hey, but like I said, it, it, all the other all the other situations were because it was they were losing, so it, they had to stay the game. So I think it needs to be a game where an, another game where you're playing a better team. Maybe you're playing the Lakers, or you're playing or something, something, something that's better than the Rockets. I mean, cause it has to be at least as good as the Rockets. Because what the when I think the Lakers played the Raptors. I mean, like it, would, it was just Kobe and Lamar Odom. That was their best two te- players on the team. And then playing what Jalen Rose and Bosch and them, Will Chamberlain playing. Uh, I don't know who hell he they had back then, but uh, but then you got Dev Booker playing against the Celtics. They they won they won the. You have to, you have to be losing or the game has to be close because they're gonna pull you, um, and you probably won't get it. Um, so Jay Harden will score seventy this season though. I I I'm still rolling with it. Oh, y'all rolling with it as well because the way he can get hot, he can get twenty free throws. He can get eight or nine of 13 shot threes. So, you know, that's 47 right there. If you make all 20 and you go <laughs> nine for, you know, 13 from the three point line, that's 47. Right. And I mean, and he'll get some floaters and some mid range. He can get 70 in no time. Like, James, when James heats up, he heats up. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so it's, it's going to be one where he gets it. So I'm not worried about it. James Harden will get 70. He may get eight. He might push. He might push the eighty, man. I, I, I ain't. I ain't gonna go that far, but he might. He, he might do it. I believe in James Harden. Um, another game. The Lakers win streak finally comes to an end. Ten game winning streak. They, I think they're seventeen and two or well, seventeen and three. I think that was the like, best start in franchise uh, history. And that's pretty surprising with you know Kareem, Magic, Kobe, Shaq, all that. Um, LeBron James and Anthony Davis get it done. Um, but Luca came and Luca won. 27 points, nine, I think it was nine rebounds, 10 assists, something like that. And LeBron had a good game. Davis had a good game. Um, this this Maverick team, man, this 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 is a type of game where, well, you, you know it's a long season. It's 82 games. But this is a type of game where this this will, could win a, a Luka MVP. I feel like it's two guys who really should be the front runners for MVP. Um, and I know we got the hardest of the world and LeBron and Davis, but when you're looking at Luka and when you're looking at a guy like Siakam, what they're doing for their teams, I feel like that's more impressive um, as far as more value because even even if we didn't think the Mavericks, even even if we thought the Mavericks were going to make the playoffs, for example, we didn't think that they would be a top four seed. You know, I was thinking because you got Porzingis, he's trying to work his way back in. You're going to be a seven to eight fighting to get in type of team where this team, this seems like one of the best teams in the NBA. Yeah, the Mavs, they're playing good ball, man. And the scary part is Luka and KP are both not even in their primes yet, and KP is still working himself back into shape, so he's not even in peak condition, peak form right now, and they're still being one of the best teams, not only in the West, but overall in the NBA, so it's crazy. Uh, I'm with you, man. MVP race, Luka, he's definitely in that top three to four, and if I'd say the top five, I would have Siakam there as well. Giannis, LeBron, 
Luca, Harden, Siakam, no particular order for anybody. Maybe one that's my order. No, there's just a, the five guys I would have in the MVP race. But yeah, Luca's been impressive, man. Um, that Lakers ten game win streak, you know, it came against some of the sorrier teams in the league. But on a in a league where any night, any afternoon, somebody can get going and you can lose the game. Ten game win streaks are still impressive, no matter what. I mean, even when it was the Heat, they were winning so many games in a row. With the Warriors, they win all those games. You got to still be able to beat the bad teams and the good teams. So, a win streak is impressive, no matter who it's against. Right. Um, yeah. So this, I, I feel, I feel like they, both these teams are. We're, we're going to see these teams down the line. Both their games that they played this season have been great. So, uh, the the Lakers just had a bad third quarter. They lost about well, I think. Then they lost about the end of the score. They lost about fourteen, I think, in that quarter. So, you you know you have you have to come out of the second half with better, you know, with 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 more intensity, especially you know winter streaking. And you got a team like the Mavs who are young, hungry, and and trying to prove themselves. So you you can't you can't let off no matter like you said, no matter who it is, bad or good team. So um, I'm not you know I, I I'm not really worried about this game. But like I said, every time the Mavericks play and Lakers play each other, expect expect a good game because um, it's like it feel like they, it's like they can't stop each other. Luca can't be stopped. I feel like we, we, we need to put him in that category of a special cap tower player. Like he's a one of a kind. And you know we've been on Lucas before. You know right before he got over here, and we you know I know he was the best player in that draft. Um, a lot of people had, they didn't get the chance to see him, but he's special. I mean, it's it's when has when has a when has a top player that's, that's a six eight six nine guard been been a bad pick. Like Magic, Penny Hardaway, LeBron. You got, I mean, even though Jason Kidd wasn't that big, but he was six five, same type of same type of build. Like this, Ben Simmons, this 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 way it works. You know what I mean? As far as a a, a big guard who can do it, who can do it all, and I think that's a that's the way to go if you can find one. Yeah, the only guy I can think of that was around that size that didn't really pan out is probably like Tyreek Evans. That's probably about right. it. You know, and, and, and he's, most, he's okay. Like he's not even like you know he's not even the best. I mean, he, yeah, yeah. He was just before his he was before his right, time. Right. Like 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 now the big guards in. But if you'd have came a little bit later, he'd have been he'd have been totally fine, man. But speaking of guys that's heating up, man, we got Melo got Blaze on the three and no street Western Conference Player of the Week, man. Let's shout out to Melo, man. Hey, I don't really think he should have got it, but um, but yeah, I mean, he had a great he had a great. He had a great uh, a great win, um, great week, but James Harden, I think I still think he he should have got it. But you know, either way, it's it's all good. It's only a week award. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he can have it. Yeah, hey, James Harden can win this thing every week, man. <laughs> <laughs> How he play, but but yeah, shout out Melo, man. I'm, you know, I'm glad to see him doing big things. We we both won one of the Blazers a while ago, and it's good he's finally uh getting some shine, man. Hey, I gotta I gotta bring this up too, man. Everybody had just one job. How about the one guy that lost his job? Freaking Nick Foles got paid and lost a job already, man. <laughs> Once again, the Jags organization they got it wrong. <laughs> I mean, they, come on, man. You paid Bortles. Now you're going to pay – you pay Foles. The guy plays basically what a half of a quarter, tears his shoulder up, comes back <laughs> – and now you already have benched him. Like that's ridiculous, man. And they they're paying him good money too, man. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I, mean, I think I, I don't think it's eighty eight guaranteed, but it's eighty eight, um, eighty eight million dollars at least total for at least for the deal. But hey, when you I don't know, man. It just I think that's just pretty weird. That, that that's, that's pretty weird. That's pretty weird. Um, because I, I I need I need I need to see guys starting to get fired for these kind of decisions, man. Oh, definitely it should. Why not? <laughs> you especially you made two. And within like what four, three, four years, you got it. That just, that just, that just pretty bad. Yeah, I need to start seeing guys get fired on this kind of stuff because there's like Redskins and what Jad was doing. Like you only can make so many bad picks, so many bad contracts before somebody got to stand up and say, "Look, man, like I feel like the commissioner should step in. Like hey, y'all, y'all effing up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Y'all no, y'all making too many bad deals. We can't just keep letting y'all do this. You gotta, you gotta find somebody and start interviewing some other candidates because this is just ridiculous, man. But I guess for the Jaguar side, they can sell some merch for uh 
Me and Shoe Mania. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have rolled, I think I would have rolled with Nick Foles versus Wade because you know, young youngers thing, I paid his money to this guy. I can't I can't give up my investment that that fast. Um and it's, 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 it's really all Nick Foles' fault. I mean, he had a lot of turnovers getting strip sacked because what y'all for the line is horrible. So and you couldn't run the ball because the Buccaneers is a good run team. So I feel like the, it was a that was a matchup game. Like the Jaguars just wasn't good. Like they just don't match up well with the Bucks. So and if Winston, if Winston not throwing pick sixes, then you know then the Bucks can win the game. So I, I don't I don't know. I think that was that was probably premature. I mean probably for the game take him out, but not not to go with Minshew the rest of the way. I don't think that was the right decision. Um, going to last thing MVP updates. Um, I want to put I want to put somebody in the top five. I don't know what number he is. Maybe five. He can be three. Can, it don't matter whatever number you want to put him at. But I feel like Derrick Henry deserves to be in the top five or at least discuss. Um, you're talking about the last three games for the Tennessee Titans. 23, ca- 23 carries, 188 yards, two touchdowns. 19 carries, 159 yards, two touchdowns. 26 carries, 149 yards, a touchdown. That is that's 500 yards in 68 attempts. That is 7.29 yards. Per run, so you know that's just that speaks volumes for itself. Titans are three and zero in that in those three games, so um, they're seven and five now. They're tied with the Steelers. Steelers are in for whatever you know, whatever tiebreaker that it comes down to, because uh, because they because they, they, they didn't play each other. So um, we've both been on, on the Titans bandwagon for a long time, and I think Derrick Henry deserves to be at least in consideration. At least not for MVP, offensive player of the year. He should be in consideration. I know McCaffrey is having a record breaking season, and Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas, and then you got Devin Cook probably in third place. But I feel like Derrick Henry is, is passed, and at least it needs to be up there with with with, with those guys. He's he's just he's balling just as good as those those guys. So I I, I want Derrick, I want Derrick Henry to be in there. And I will continue to <laughs> beat the drum of his teammate <laughs> Ryan Tan Ryan Tannehill in the MVP race. And if I want to say, well, he didn't play; he won't play the entire season. Um, what well, I clearly recall, 2016, when Tom Brady didn't play the entire season, he was suspended for four games, but he ki- he still came back, went 11 and one, put up some great numbers, and he finished, uh, I think, second or third. Because Matt Ryan won it, but Matt Ryan, Brady, and Rodgers were the top three. I'm not saying, like you said, Derrick Henry, he should be, you know, top five ish. I'm not saying Tannehill should win the award. I'm not saying he should be top two or three. I'm just saying he should be in consideration for the NFL MVP award just because of what he did for this team. They were two and four. He rescued their season. They've turned it around. In his six starts, they're five and one. He's completing 71.8 percent of his passes, 1,458 yards, 15 total touchdowns, only three interceptions. I mean, what more do you want from right. the guy? <laughs> right, exactly. He, he's basically on a similar pace as Brady was through his six starts, just less yards. And I think Brady had almost like 1,900 yards at that point. But, you know, he has less yards and two more picks than Brady did through his six starts in that same season. So, you know, just – He's not going to win the award. I know that. I'm not crazy. He's not going to win the award. But just when you look at the word valuable, yeah. to rescue the, to rescue the Titans from two and four to get them back in playoff consideration, division consideration, you have to look at. I mean, he basically is kind of helping Derrick Henry because nobody can stack the box now because Tanner can actually throw right. the ball. Yeah. So it's it kind of like it's kind of like the same situation we talked about. With, 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 yeah, with exactly, exactly. Cook. I was about to say the same thing. And, you know, it's kind of like it probably can't both – obviously you both can't win it because they're both on the same team. But it feel like it feel like the reason why Tannehill may not have the yards that, that that you know, Brady had since he came back is because what? They're here and got all the yards. Like, he had 500 yards in three games. That's – I mean, you know, and that's just running the ball. So – um, but yeah, so we, we talked about them. We we know the Russ and Lamar's are up there. We we know that Mahomes came back. He didn't look that great, but he got got a W. Um, <clears throat> in, in the Monday football game, Seattle Minnesota. Seattle pulled it out, thirty seven thirty. 
they were they were up. They were up big. Uh, got up big. I think it was 17, 10 at halftime in Minnesota, and Seattle got up big quickly on Minnesota. And Kirk Cousins, he did everything in his power to to get them get them back in the game. Um, he it was a fourth down and three, <clears throat> throwing out throwing out route to Irv Smith. It did it didn't complete, and Seattle ran the ball. But I mean, the narrative is always going to be that Kirk Cousins can't win in the big games. You got Cook fumbling. Threw the ball to Diggs and Diggs got you know to the ball. The ball came out of his hand. He, he didn't catch the ball. Turnover there, and obviously it's going to go under for Cousins, but it's, it's really not his turnover. Uh, the defense gave up 400 and some yards to 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 the Seattle offense, whether that's Carson and Penny on the ground, rushed through the air, and yet he still came back. Uh, strike, 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 touchdown, and he had a chance to almost win the game. And I think we said it before the show. We was like, man, at some point. Is either gonna be is either gonna be where Russ MVP case gets a little stronger because you know he he got he had a big a big a big play to uh, David Moore late uh, early, uh, early in the second half, but then or Kirk Cousins case becomes really really strong with a comeback win in Seattle. But like I said, it came came up a little too short um, in the MVP race. But I I, mean, I feel like I feel like Kirk Cousins is still there. I mean he's almost. He, he's almost he's right there with the numbers with all the guys as as up, as up front. Uh, we know what Russ doing. He's doing great things. I think he's a, what one of the what four quarterbacks or three quarterbacks to have three thousand eight straight seasons to start a, start a career. Is that, is that was I think with Peyton Manning and and, and Tom Brady as well. I'm not I, I'm not for sure. I saw that that that, that graphic during the game. Yes, I, I can I can remember what it was, but it's something pretty pretty Recently, similar yeah. to it. But your Russ is. Yeah, man, Russ is on a tear, man. Like he's still my number one. If he decided to be a running back like Lamar, he would have got two more touchdowns from uh, Carson and Pitt. <laughs> but that's that's neither here nor there. But man, I, I think Russ is number one because without what he's without him, what he what they're doing, they would not be in position to do this. Like the Ravens have an elite defense; they basically have everything perfect. Best Where kicker, in Seattle, they, best kicker too in the game. Don't miss field goals and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, you know, Seattle. I think a lot of people were, especially me. You know, we thought they could be, they could win eight or nine games just because they had Russ, and now they're in top seed, and you know, they're looking at possibly winning the division, depending upon how they finish up down the stretch. Right. So yeah, Russ is playing out of his mind, man. I mean, they've been, they've, they've been pulling out close game after close game. They're basically the opposite of the Chargers. The Chargers find a way to lose them. Seattle finds ways right. to win. I'm mean, say because this was another close game where you only up you only up four. Well, you know because damn, you know kickers can't make extra points. So instead of being down three by Minnesota, they had to go score a touchdown to go win the game. Um, but the de- the, de- the defense was able to get a tip pass on the third down, and then was able to get was able to get a stop on on the fourth down. So you got You got to credit them when, when it's due as well it's for Seattle to pull out pull out pull out tough games. Um, another thing I want to mention about that, you know that. That game, that was the game. That was a, a big game for the NFC because see, see, if Seattle lost that game, they would have been the sixth seed, lost the tiebreaker to Minnesota, who, you know, obviously is not in that division. But also, also the 49ers would have had, had the game up on them. The Rams was right there. They played Seattle next week, so they could have tried to flip, flop, blah, blah. Uh, but they ended up winning. So now they're the two seed. Saints is the one. Green Bay is the three. Cowboys the four. 49ers the five. And the Vikings the six. You got Rams one game back. They have a hard schedule. They have to play the. They have to play Seattle and 49ers. and then the Cowboys, which you know you can say all you want about the Cowboys, but I mean the Rams are you know they haven't really been that impressive either. So, but I want to ask you this: Would you would you rather be eight and zero at home and then just five hundred on the road as far as far as a Super Bowl contender? Like if you look at, if you're looking at like what a Super Bowl contender is, blah blah. Would you rather be eight and zero? On, at home at four and four on the road or eight no on the road and four and four at home. Uh I'd rather take the road wins than the home wins just because if you win on the road and you can just squeak by a few at right. home, you're gonna get your playoff game at home and you should be able to find a way to win that game. Right. Okay. The reason I ask that because like Minnesota, I think, and New England are the only two teams that are left undefeated. Um in in the in in the NFL because what didn't because the Patriots lose in Foxborough? To the Ravens or the Ravens? Oh no! Or was it in? 
Oh no 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 no, no, no those in those okay, in Baltimore okay. and, and they lost they they, they lost it, to Houston. Right. So, so, well. so yeah, so I was like, so he, Minnesota and, and New England are the only two teams to not lose at home. Vikings got three home games left and one road game to the Chargers, which you know you know how it is. They, it's really a, a home game. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of like they can have they have the potential to be eight no, eight no at home, four and four on the road, twelve and four. Um, while you know while you know you got Seattle and Forty Nine and Rams going to play each other. Uh, the Packers played, you know, they played nobody, they, or they played, they played the same teams that the Minnesota played. You're uh, going down the stretch. You have the Cowboys and Eagles matchup that's going to happen in Week 16, and then the Saints are already in the playoffs. Um, I know you've been saying the NFC West are going to get three in, um, but I feel like I feel like when Minnesota, when Minnesota won the Cowboys game and then find a way to come back against the Broncos, which which we we knew it was a trap game because we, we called it, we said it was going to be a trap game, but they find a way to come back and win that one. I, I feel like those two. I feel like th- those two wins probably stops the Rams from getting in, in my opinion. Uh, we can go into this de- more detail later on down the line, probably you know Thursday show or even next week after, after you know after you know this time next week. But when you're looking at, you know, do do you trust the Rams to? Because they seven, they got seven wins. So if Minnesota hasn't lost a game at home, and let's, let's say they go eight no, that means Rams have to win out. And you got to hope the Chargers win. You know, it, it, you know, all, all, all different scenarios. It's kind of like I said, it's too early to probably really go into it. But um, do you do you still are you still are you still in your band? Are you still on the on the on the side of the NFC West, or do you think it's is you think it may be a little too bit too late for the Rams? Because I don't know, I don't know what, what you're thinking, but you know, I I I don't know if Seattle if Rams can beat Seattle and 49ers. They, they, I think they can. I think they're gonna get one. I feel like you to make the playoffs, you have, you have to get one. To be a play a good playoff team, so uh, what what side do you do you, do you lie on before we get out of here? Uh, I'm still rolling with the you NFC know, West gets three teams, just because I think the Rams for sure for sure get the Cardinals win. That's the last one, right. and then I think they'll probably get Seattle next week. So that's two. So that puts you at nine, and I think they'll probably get the Cowboys. It won't be an early game. It'll be like a middle of the day game. And it'll be inside, so we don't have to worry about weather. So I think they'll get they'll, I don't think they'll get the 49ers because the 49ers, they're in a tough stretch and they won't lose all the games. So I think they'll probably lose to the 49ers. But I think they can win three of the others. And Minnesota, they're gonna get they're gonna get a trap game somewhere. I'm not sure how the tiebreaker shake out. They're both ten and six. I have a look at that, but I think they're gonna get trapped by you know, it'll probably come out to that very, very last week of all right, y'all are playing Cardinals. You got to beat them, and then what the Vikings? I think Vikings they're get, both probably want. Vikings up. get the Bears, but see, I see. But my, my whole thing about it Ben, is 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 I don't know if Rams can go three and one, probably two and two, and I think I think week seventeen, if the if if it's if it's play how how it plans out, you know, with Stafford being out for the Lions, uh, the Chargers probably reeling. You know, I I feel like it just I think it, it's more of those. It, it, it's more of those at the right time when you play somebody because, you know, for example, uh, they're just like, like I said, we're gonna, we ain't going to take too long on this, but just for example, South Carolina in college football. If they had played Georgia this weekend, Georgia would have been on 50. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like they just p- played them at, you know, you play teams at the right time. And I feel like, you know, uh, Vikings getting the Chargers team who kind of, you know, I mean, obviously they're not going to quit playing, but you know, like, you know, you, you know how it is when you're on a losing team Sometimes things go different ways, and you don't know how. When you when you're not a young team, you know how some things just don't go your way, and people start playing for themselves. It, it, you know how you know how that go. You know sometimes yeah, yeah just, just just bad right, breaks right, or right. just some so, stuff. Just a bonehead play here that can cost you the I game. I feel like if Vikings if Vikings had the same stretch with with the Chargers, Lions, Packers, Bears, and it was maybe five weeks earlier than what it is, then you know I w- I wouldn't be as confident. You know you, you you get what I'm saying? Like I w- I wouldn't be as confident as I, as I am. Like now, you know what I'm saying? Because I knew, I knew going to Seattle, I'm most likely we were gonna lose that game. Like I already in my mind, I was like, okay, at Seattle, you know, you know what you do, you know you go through the schedule. You're like, okay, that's that's probably gonna be ill. So we have to, we have to get this, we have to get this, we have to get this to make up for it. And I feel like they did, they did it by beating the Cowboys. I was like, well, if we got, we got to beat one of them. We can't lose both, and they did split one. But the Rams, like I said, Rams, both teams have a chance to, both teams have a chance, have the chance to win and. And still, the NFC is still wide open because I mean Minnesota probably probably can't get the a uh, 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 buy, but the division is still up for grabs. So it's it's feel like it's like it's like everybody's still in it, but it's really only only seventeen is possible. 
Yeah, yeah, we got yeah, we got one out of twelve already secured. The Saints are on ones that have clinched and are guaranteed a top three spot. So that's pretty much the only thing. Oh yeah, top three. Yeah, right but, I, but, I, but, I, I said well, you said I was like top three, but Cowboys ain't catch them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cowboy, Cowboys, Cowboys, and Eagles won't catch Cowboys, them. Cow, Cowboys, <laughs> catch, but but yeah, we're gonna be back um Thursday, um with another show. Hey man, it's like I said, it's, it's getting down to that wire, man. It's 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 kind it's kind of it's kind of crazy right now. Oh yeah, let's get down to the fun part of the season. We got we'll have college bowl games announced soon. We'll have you know the college football conference championships. Last four weeks of the regular season, seeing how the playoff season shakes out. So we're we're getting down to the nitty gritty now, man. The, the, the fun stuff is beginning. Oh yeah, definitely. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun, and hopefully we can win our fancy matchup this week in playoffs. Right? I say, so <laughs> fancy fancy football playoffs starting too. Let's, let's go. go. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, preach, care, preach, Rashad. You got a problem. Yeah.